Customers are buying your technology. They're hiring your technology to get outcomes. That's that's what they care about. And uh, that sentiment is, is is something that is is just pervasive now in the industry. So if you go out there and just Google the term, you know, business outcomes, you are going to find articles. You are going to find web pages. Here's just a list of of some of the examples, you know, that I pulled in for a recent uh, paper that I did on this topic. And so, you know, you see Microsoft and Dell and AWS and 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 Cisco and Tech Data and all these companies talking about business outcomes and, and aligning their technology solutions um, to, to drive uh, business outcomes. And so let's do our, our first poll here and just make sure people are still hanging in there in the, in the home stretch. So, so does your company website have the phrase customer outcome or business outcome? Yes, no, or maybe you say, hey, look, I, I don't know. Let's see where the data comes in. And I'm curious how fast folks are with the trigger fingers here. Come on, folks. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're very fast, Thomas. I know. There, see, there, <laughs> you know see, if I'm doing a keynote, there's going to be polling. All right, so we're picking up a little bit here. We need some, a little more, a little bit more. But a uh, pretty strong signal. 70, oh, 80, 20 now-ish. Boy, they were a little slow. Now they're yeah. coming in. Now there they're coming in. Yeah. All right, folks. Um, so right now, over half of you are saying yes, at least half of you are saying yes. Um, and the next largest is, I don't know, at 35% there. Um, I just, I realized, Maria, by the way, on these, I see data that I think is fresher than what you people see on the screen. So if you're wondering why, what, what I say might not line exactly what you're seeing, there's a little bit of a lag there. But about 47% of you are saying, saying yes. So um, it's very common, right? It's almost a common practice in the industry now to be talking about how your solution is going to drive outcomes. Um, here's the the bad news. <laughs> um, you know, your marketing departments for a lot of you are writing checks that that you can't cash <laughs> on the actual the delivery side, right? That there there is a gap here, and that's why we're, we want to talk about you know closing down um, this gap. And I have another uh, quick polling question here uh, around outcomes. Do you have any? offers that are priced based on the customer receiving the outcomes, right? This is really where you'd put your money where your mouth is, right? You wouldn't just have this as marketing material and some slick web page, but I mean, you would really be willing to commit to this. So this is a yes, no, and I don't know. And let's see where this data comes in. Let's see if folks are faster with the fingers here. Oh, they're way faster with the fingers. This is great. Um, and a pretty strong signal coming in, yeah. and um, and this is not a, a surprise. So, um, 67%, almost 70% of you saying no, we, we don't price based on outcomes. Now, part of that, if you look in the industry, and we'll talk about pricing in outcome engineering here, part of that is that customers aren't aren't ready for that model. Um, it definitely is a minority practice, um, but I think it would be terrifying for many of you if your customers really did want you to step up and, and commit to getting the outcome or, or you don't get paid, right, if, if the outcome's not achieved. Um, so we have been uh, working on this topic of outcome engineering, as, as many of you know, for, 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 for many years now. We've done many papers on it, and we just did a, a paper this year, uh, keeping the content fresh, uh, around closing this gap, right? Because, it, again, it's now a common practice for, for tech companies to be promoting outcomes, but there is also this common practice of not really being able to deliver on that, that promise. And to set this up, I just want to remind everybody, you know, why outcomes, why outcome engineering, why are, you know, why are we on this topic? And, and, and we know, again, it's a very important topic. Laura Fay has uh, done research with, with, with the product community, asking what's important around offers and in delivering outcomes, right, is coming and bubbling up to the top of the queue. So, so as you go from left to right, there are things on the left are, are really important to, to product folks around their offers. And so, being able to deliver outcomes um, has become really important. And as technology providers, we want to climb the value ladder. This is something we've been talking about again for several years at TSIA. Um, we don't want to just come in and say, hey, I've got this really cool, slick technology. I can help you out with the technology because that conversation is getting you know, commoditized. It, it's, it's getting dated. 
we want to start talking to customers about their business KPIs. Again, Bill said this morning, man, you better really understand and know your customer. You've got to really know what your customer cares about, how they're operating. And so understanding their KPIs, not your KPIs, their KPIs, how can you move them? And ultimately, what are the business outcomes that the customer is trying to achieve? And how do you plug into that? So we want to climb this value ladder. And the other reality that's driving this are really the, the economics, the financials here. And it, you know we've done pricing uh, survey work for, for years at TSIA. And I can tell you that you know cost-based pricing <laughs> is the most common approach uh, to, to pricing tech offers historically. And what does that mean? You look at your cost to deliver a particular offer. You put on top of that the margin you would like, and that sets your your price. But but you know that model is under pressure, right? You know customers are are are, are saying, look, I don't I don't want to pay that. And by the way, I don't care about your target margin. And it forces us into market-based pricing, where we have to align where the market is. And in a lot of markets, technology uh, offers the, the price is going down or it's under pressure, right? Especially if you look at the hardware, for example. So you've got these costs, and your and your your market your margins getting squeezed because of market competition. And so this is, again, a pricing model that we're not so excited about anymore because we want to bring margin back in. So that leaves us with value-based pricing. And value-based pricing is basically you're starting with what is the value, right? The business outcome that I'm going to deliver. I understand that first. And then I engineer from there. I figure out, okay, what's the cost it's going to take me to deliver that value? And now here I have a lot of play. I have a lot of wiggle room and potential margin, right? I don't have to, you know, charge all the way up to the value, value line. Obviously I'm not. I'm going to charge somewhere less than that, but it gives me a lot more flexibility. So this is a driver for outcome engineering. This is why we all want to talk about business outcomes so we can draw that value line and hang our head on that. Now, you know, a lot of times, we, again, we have good intentions uh, in business and uh, we, we don't get there, right? And so what causes uh, our strategies to, to, to fail? You know, three things, if you look in the literature, right? We have unrealistic objectives. <laughs> we don't really understand what it's going to take to, to get somewhere. Uh, we don't have alignment within key stakeholders. Um, and there is this gap in organizational capabilities, right? We're trying to get here and we just don't have those um, capabilities. And so those three things will prevent you from, from executing on a strategy. And so when it comes to delivering outcomes for your customers, we want to close these gaps down. And there, in this last uh, paper that we we did on this topic here, we fleshed out some of these tactics. And so there's a sort of a stepping stone here uh, that we can that we can look at. And so starting out, getting all the key stakeholders to understand what are the core principles of outcome engineering, what's involved here. Do, do, do product teams, service teams, sales teams, everybody understand that. Um, next, what are potential outcomes that we could deliver for customers? <laughs> do we un do we understand that what those are? The next, you know, how are we going to really get good at developing offers that are based on outcomes? Really, you know, make that industrial at, at our company. And then, uh, as Steve Frost talked about yesterday, the importance of, of selling outcomes. Um, and then last but not least, servicing customers in the long term that are that are on outcome based offers. So what we're going to cover today are, are, are really the first three of these building blocks, right? These some core principles, um, identifying potential outcomes and then developing uh, outcome offers. So let's do another quick quick uh, polling question here, starting with, with, with the principles of outcome engineering. Did, did your product sales service teams, do they have a common understanding? of outcome engineering? Do, do they have a common you know, framework methodology? Let's take a look and see see where we are in this and how mature this is. Wow. Yeah, this one looks wow. pretty unanimous. Yeah, it's coming in pretty strong here. 76%, at least at least a 70-30 rule. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll let the data flow in here a, a little bit more. So so just this pause on that, right? I, I, I just you know, over half of you saying we're talking about business outcomes on our website. I showed you all these examples of companies that are talking about business outcomes, and yet 84% of you are saying we don't have a common 
methodology or a framework across the key stakeholders. That's gap number one that you've got to close down, right? You've got to close that down. You know, what is outcome engineering? Getting a common definition. And we've done this, uh, you know, in our research for you. This is our definition, but the ability to consistently help customers achieve targeted business outcomes and that you understand what's required to complete those outcomes. And in our foundational framework on outcome engineering, we argue that it's really about having a framework, the right framework that everyone's using. You are focused on, on the right outcomes, outcomes you know you can achieve for the customer. You're working with the right customer. Not all customers are, are, are really the right ones to work with because they're not gonna do what you need them to do to get the outcomes. And so, You've got to have a methodology to, to, to assess there, and you've got tools, right, that, that, that people are using. So, so getting all the key stakeholders to start aligning and understanding these principles is important. Another foundational principle is just really defining types of outcomes. And again, we've done this in, in, our, in our research, but, but often people immediately want to go to financial, oh, business outcome, you know, we're going to save them money or we're going to help them get some revenue. That's not always... The, the case there is we, we there's three types of outcomes you can go after after one is consumption based and again bill this morning talked about how really all pricing is going to be consumption based we, we agree um it's going from availability to pricing um but that that's a type of outcome hey the customer used something so they that now you charge them the second type of outcome is is kpi you move a business kpi for the customer there are i would say this is the most prevalent model that i see when people start getting into outcome based offers is they anchor on a kpi a kpi they know they can measure and that they are confident that they can improve for the customer again kpi the customer cares about and then there are type 3 outcomes which are financially you know oriented so so again just having all the key stakeholders have a common framework and how your the vernacular for talking about outcomes is important. And also a common framework for understanding where you are in the journey. What's your maturity model here? We, we, we've outlined this, uh, we have four levels of, uh, of, of different um, maturity when it comes to outcome engineering. Uh, by the way, companies usually, usually start doing this for free. You know, often you call it value engineering, working with a customer to unlock value. It's a consultative type motion that you're just throwing in so you can learn. Then we see people start charging for it and then eventually they're able to start to take it uh, to scale. Most companies we, we deal with are, are really just at, you know free, maybe starting to monetize early in the journey. But again, just having a common framework, it'd be really helpful for everybody in sales, services, product, et cetera. So having common principles is, is important. Um, and all of these principles are really well defined in a paper that we did a couple of years ago for members called a primer for outcome engineering. So if you have business outcomes in that term on your website, and you're not aligned on a framework, get this paper and give it to all the key stakeholders and say, look, just read this through so we can start to build a common vernacular and you can tweak it and build off of it and, you know, and make it your own, okay? Go make this framework your own. So let's move from common principles and then you know, targeted outcomes. Do you have a methodology for identifying target customer outcomes that you wanna go after? Again, yes, no, you know, I don't know. Let's see, let's see what is gonna happen here, Maria. Dun, dun, dun. It looks a little better than- It does look a little better, this is good. The, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's I'm a little more encouraging. It's very, yeah, this is encouraging. Um, so it's still unfortunately majority practice, 57% of you, 58% uh, of you saying no, um, but 26% of you saying yes, which is awesome. So we're starting to, you know, this is the capability we're starting to close, you know, we're close down, which is, which is fantastic. Um, so let's talk about this one, right? Identifying, um, customer outcomes. Uh, there is a body of work, uh, that uh, Val Golowski has done on our team. He's worked with several members on this topic where literally you get in, you roll up your sleeves and say, okay. What are potential outcomes you know your organization could help a customer achieve? And so there's a there's a six step workflow um, that he's defined here, and I'm just going to walk by or through it quickly for you to give it give you a flavor for it. Um, but you know it really is a step by step on on how to to find a particular or specific outcome you can go after. And really, what this methodology that that Val has documented is doing. Is, is helping fill in these these gaps, right? So, so you think about 
what's your customer trying to achieve, right? And you need to understand the rest of this, right? You need to understand who the key um, roles are that are involved. You have to understand the KPIs that the customer cares about, you know, the processes that are impacted here. You know, it's not just about your technology. Boom, here you go. You, If you're really gonna be in the game of, of business outcomes, you have to bring back the lens and understand this entire landscape. And so Val has a methodology here um, to just walk a team through each step, starting with the strategic, you know, the scope of the strategic imperative. What's the output? This is an example here um, on working with an uh, oil and gas company in terms of how they can, they've got technology for that vertical. How can my technology help them get what they want, which is a, you know, a, a well that's drilled? And then going through and documenting the workflow that's associated with that. Do we really understand all the steps involved? Um, then the next step, um, or you know, fl fleshing it out, continuing to to flesh it out here. Um, and again, I'm just giving you the flyby so you get a sense for this. And then analyzing performance gaps where where you can you can uh, influence uh, the workflow then what are success plays that you can run here, right? So you get a feel for this, right? And this is, this is the engineering part of outcome engineering, right? Really rolling up your sleeves and understanding the steps involved in your customer's environment, um, and then how you can optimize that environment, you know, with your offers. And so what you've done, if I, again, and, and, and you get all the stakeholders, you get the product team, you get salespeople, account folks are involved, you get service people involved and you go through and what you've done is you've, you know, gone through and when you're done with the exercise, you can really understand, right, every, the entire environment and then, and quite frankly, only then, then you can go to this six step around pricing. Right now that we really understand what's involved, we can, we're going to understand kind of our costs involved to unlock this value. We understand how big the impact is. So what you know, let's now we can price it, right? So so you know we're, we're not just going to go out of the gate and say hey we're taking 10% of the savings. Um, now we can price because we understand and we've done our homework. We've really filled this out, and so um, that gives you a sense on step number two. If you're really trying to define specific outcomes that you can go after, this is the type of work um, that you have to do. Now, let's go to this third step, which is developing you know, outcome-based offers. And again, let's get a sense of where the audience is on this. You know, do, do, do your product and service offer teams have a methodology for designing outcome-based offers that they, that they uh, leverage? And, and, and trust me, they need to leverage it together. And let's see where the data comes in on this one. Oh, we're kind of going, well, I thought we were going the other way. That was just a, some, some anxious people are voting very quickly here. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so yeah, let's let the data flow in a little bit more. So and it's going back down. So, so 67, 66% of you, so again, almost 70% of you saying no. We don't have um, a methodology, and so so again, I mean, we're seeing a pretty consistent theme here, where we're talking about outcomes, but we have really some big gaps in our in our capabilities here. So let's talk about developing outcome offers, and this is a body of work that comes from Laura Fay, who works with you know product teams, and and really Laura's uh, mission in life is to help bring product teams closer together with service teams when it comes to developing compelling complete offers. And so when you th think about these early, early phases, right, you're thinking about the target customers and, and what these offers um, are. You can see again, I'll go back to Bill's opening comments today, but you really have to understand the customer. You see this in the life cycle here that Laura's outlining, right? You're really exploring and understanding the customer's environment, what they're trying to achieve. Then, you know, again, when you're doing this in a more industrial way, you're starting to say, hey, what kind of outcomes could we un unleash? You could bring in the methodology I just showed you on the six steps. The teams could use that to, to define some of those. And then you start to, you know, put that offer, you know, build where we have missing components, missing telemetry, missing whatever, you start to develop those capabilities. But what's also very important about when, when it comes to outcome-based offers is it is an iterative process. And so, you know, you, you get this and you get it out into the wild, and that's really where you start to learn. 
in war, no strategy survives, you know, the, the, the first meeting with the enemy, right? And and the same is true in outcome-based offers. You've got you've got this theory of, of, of how you you're, you're going to unlock this business outcome, but you got to get it out there. It, rubber meets the road. What's really working? What's not working? So it, it's very iterative. It's got to come back to the offer team. And so you know when Laura talks about <laughs> right developing compelling offers in today's world, it's got to be this complete life cycle. And it can't be disjointed. So on the left-hand side, again, you're really understanding the customer in a more intimate way to, to put uh, you know, a hypothesis on the table around how you're going to you know, deliver outcomes. You get it out there, and then you get into our layer world, right? You land it, but then is the customer adopting? Are they really getting the value? Okay, you know, they're, they're not. Go back to the offer team. Go back, and we've got to adjust, right? This is not working. And companies that are just going to crush it, you know, we, we, this whole theory of this conference has been the have and have nots, right? Have companies are, are going to do this at scale. And again, so we like this term outcome engineering. Engineering outcomes is not like, oh my gosh, it just happened. It's also, I can't emphasize this enough, It's this is not a brain on a stick model. What do I mean by that? This is not taking, you know, a bunch of your sharpest consultants, you know, from your professional services team and plopping them into a customer and getting in the trenches and helping that N of one, you know, get the answer and then, and then, okay, great. And then where's the next customer that wants, wants, wants to pay for that? That's not outcome engineering at scale. You want to learn quickly. Right, and, and especially in an as a service world, and again, this is this gap, have and have nots. You know, when you get people onto a platform and then you're seeing how they behave on the platform, you're getting a lot of data on how a lot of customers are, you know, what's working, what's not working, and then you can play that back and start to engineer these outcomes um, at scale. That's where the game's gonna be played. I love the Bill's comment this morning. He says, you know, customers are, are looking for a vision that they, they can buy into. And also you do have to understand your particular unique customer. I, I completely agree with that. I mean, you want to understand their world, but I can also tell you based on, you know, what I do for, for a living is, you know, people are, companies are not snowflakes. <laughs> there, there's a lot of pattern recognition here. And I always, I always tell people, uh, members, when I'm, when I'm talking to them about some of their challenges, I'm just, I say, look, I'm going to tell you something that, you know, I hope your mother never told you, but you're not special. <laughs> you're just not, you're not special there. You know, you have very common problems and that's what this game is about. Right. If you're going to do outcome engineering and do it at scale and do it profitably, you're looking for the patterns, the outcomes that you can unlock again and again and again. And yeah, you can you can tweak them. But you know, George Humphrey has a great philosophy on this in terms of you know custom versus standard with customers, and he calls it you know his 80-24 rule. Eighty percent of what you're doing, you know, with for a customer should be standard. And even when it comes to delivering these outcomes, it's standard. Twenty percent may be quote custom to them. But that 20%, for the vast majority of it, they're really picking off of the menu of, you know, so it's a, there's variance, but even that variance has been defined before. And then of that 20%, right, which is variable, um, maybe 20% of that is truly unique to the customer, which ends up being 4%, right, 20 of 20 is four. 4% 4 of the entire solution is something that is, is unique to that customer. And the other way that that plays into a theme we've been hitting on here since day one the jb put on the table is customers are tired of complexity they're sick of it. you heard that again from bill this morning they want the answer in the back of the book they want to get there as quickly as they can and and they're looking to you to to, to get them there and outcome engineering is you know a, a way to, to do that um and you know people there it came up i think in steve frost's uh, a keynote, somebody said, well, do you have any, because he was talking about selling outcomes, and someone said, you know, do you have any examples of, of outcome-based offers? And this is, uh, again, a paper we just put out this year to continue the forward momentum on this topic is examples of outcome-based offers for members. Uh, go read that paper. The one example I love to use because it's built around a freaking rubber tire is, is Michelin's uh, outcome-based offer around fleet management. So you can, you can read about it. Um, but come on, folks, if they can build an outcome-based offer based on a freaking rubber tire, right? I think you can do something. And I'll, and I'll put one even better. There is an outcome-based offer based on air, <laughs> based on the commodity of air. So if somebody can do that, I am sure with your incredible technology that you have, you can unlock some business outcomes. So, I mean, th 
this is the theme, folks. I mean, this is the bifurcation of the have and have nots. Outcome engineering is just is, is just one of these themes. Um, I said this at the beginning. Um, I've written it in in my paper for the state of this year. Um, the, you know, these attributes are really starting to create difference in performance of companies. Um, it's starting to become very stark. Uh, in terms of the haves and, and the have-nots. Um, you know, Bill, again, said this morning, he said, people got to stop talking about on-prem and hybrid. <laughs> you know, that's not helping you <laughs> in these conversations. You got to move into these new models. There's going to be a boatload of money spent for the next couple of years around digital transformation. We barely started to scratch the surface on on, on the potential there. And, and you want to be riding that wave. And if you're not building the kind of attributes we've been talking about for the past three days, uh, things like outcome engineering, things like all the other uh, topics that, that we've, we've been, been covering, you're going to get left behind. And, you know, and if you think about it, uh, in, you know, in this podcast series that we're doing, we end up every episode by asking, you know, the, sort of what's the big question here? And, you know, the big question for, for you on this topic on outcome engineering is, is what pricing model do, do you want to be in? You know, three years from now, four years from now, is it is it cost plus? I'm telling you, you're not going to be getting a lot of market share with that. Um, you're going to be driven to market based, and if your market is commoditized and your and your and the pricing is based on your feature functionality, that's going to be a painful place to be. You want to be in some type of value based pricing. That is where you want to be. So that is our quick review on outcome engineering. Again, unbelievable resources we have available. Uh, check it out. Um, if you have questions on it, you can always uh, email me directly. I'm more, more than welcome uh, to take that. And then just quickly as a reminder, um, it, uh, we, we did an info session on this, but we do have two new exciting practices in play, one on service offer management. It covers all services, the whole services portfolio and what's going on there, and the other one around customer growth and renewal. So if you have interest, check those out.